Good, mor- good morning. Is that working? Sorry for sounding so aggressive there. <laughs> ah, good morning. Good morning. There we go. Ah, oh, James, I've been running around getting myself all sorted. Um, welcome to worship this morning. A really warm welcome to you on this lovely harvest service. Honestly, when I came in today, I'm always just taken away by the the front desk. It's always so beautiful. And then you come in here and all our windows are displayed and it's just looking amazing. So a huge thank you to those who took time and energy and effort and thought into creating such beautiful displays um, for our harvest service today. Please, can I invite you not to rush away? You're, you're super welcome across the road um, for a cup of tea afterwards. That's such an important time, uh, part of our time together. Um, but can I really encourage you to just linger here a little bit longer and have a look at some of these really lovely displays. A special heads up to the one over here, which was created by the DJ Club. So huge thanks to the DJ Club team who got that looking so fabulous. So you have our intergenerational um, arrangements here. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, And for those that are tuning in online, you can find some photos on our Facebook page. We'll make sure that you get to see all the lovely displays as well. So um, I have put the heating on, by the way, which means it'll be nice and toasty when we all leave. So sorry about that. You'll be keeping your coats on, I'm sure. Um, So notices, I've got special... um, ones to draw attention to this morning. Blyswood will be available next week. I know this church is brilliant at getting behind this project, so um, that's going to kick off next week. Um, Super Monday is back in the go. While we've been doing our listening project, one of the things that came through lots of the forms that we got was what a benefit Super Monday was, that we would share soup in the pit cairn in the cold winter starts to the week. So we don't want to rely on just a few people. So we would love if more were able to help. We were blessed with a chef last year that was able to help. He's not going to be able to help this time, so we're going to have to um, get some more people in the rota for making soup as well. So for serving and for soup making, um, please get in touch. And also, can you announce the cake stall? It gives me great pleasure to announce cake. Um, which is on Thursday the 28th. Any of the bakers that are um, got certificates, we would love your donations. Ah, <sighs> there we go. Oh no, right, there's one more really important notice. Um, and this is our last one. Josh was going to come and give this announcement, but he's not well. He's been hit by the largy, so we'll pray for him. Um, But we wanted for him to announce that we have our holiday club, which is going to be February as ever. And we would really love as many volunteers as possible. We'd love for you to be able to experience a little of holiday club, to get to know some of the kids that come along to the holiday club. So if you have one day that you're able to commit, we would absolutely love for you to come and be part of that. This is a really really important time in the church calendar when we run our holiday club during the February break um, and we would love you to be part of that. (sighs) Right, that's it. No more announcements, I think. Um, Just time to light our candle. Has anybody had a birthday or a special event or anything? Linda, Linda, you're getting pointed at. Special birthday, you had a birthday. Do you want to come and light our candle? Oh, she's looking delighted about that. Oh, when was it the start of the week, your birthday? That's right, because you missed out last week because it was Alice's birthday, that's right. Well, you didn't miss out completely. You get to light the candle today. And we remember that we light this candle as a symbol of Jesus' love and light shining in our presence. We'll not ask how many candles you had to blow out at the start of the week. (laughs) Great, great, good job. Let's take a moment and still our hearts and let's pray. Father, we thank you for this Harvest Sunday. Father, we thank you that your presence is with us, that your spirit moves among us. We pray that we would know your anointing in all that we do and we see in our time together. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Let's now join all our voices together as we sing our opening hymn for the beauty of the earth. Let's once more turn to the Father in prayer, and then at the end we'll say the Lord's Prayer together, which will be on the screen. Let's pray. Father, we have much to thank you for. We do indeed thank you for the beauty of your creation, for the beauty and the simplicity of a flower for the beauty and the complexities of a garden and the beauty of farmland and the beauty of hillsides and the beauty of oceans. Father, we thank you for the beauty of this earth. And Father, we thank you for the beauty that we can see in each other, the beauty that we see in a kind act, the beauty that we can hear in a thoughtful phrase. Father, we thank you for the family in which you have placed us here in Bonnyrigg Parish Church. Father, that each one is celebrated, appreciated and valued. Father, as we thank you for your creation, as we thank you for your church, We thank you for the greatest gift of all, the gift of Jesus. Father, we thank you for all that he means to us. We thank you for his grace, his goodness, his mercy and his love. We thank you too for the power of the Holy Spirit moving within and around us, equipping us for all that we need to do, bringing us comfort helping us find hope. Father, as we gather here as your people in this church and online, we join our voices together as a family as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples when he said, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, DJ Club, I've been working hard at my spelling this morning. Who likes spelling at school? He's a fan of spelling. Oh, a few, oh, a few spelling. Who prefers numbers? Who likes counting? Oh, I'm definitely more of a... I'm, I'm more spelling than I am numbers, but my spelling's pretty horrible. So, let's see. We've got some things to uh, spell out. What do you think, in light of what Sunday it is, what do you think I'm going to spell out here? What was that? Harvest, you think? Oh, no, Jings, I should have got... Let's see if I'm going to spell it out. could spell, spell out anything here. So, huh? What's after the huh? Huh. Ah, uh, for harvest, you're absolutely on it. I'm glad you're here. Ha, ah, er, v. Oh no, do we think it's going to fit on my table? V, oh no. There we go. <laughs> what do we think? Harvest Sunday, hooray! So, harvest, I was thinking about this, and harvest is a brilliant opportunity for us to I know, how clever is that? Not shave, I nearly had shave in there, not shave, is a great opportunity to share. And that's what we're doing this morning. We're bringing all these amazing produce and we want to share it with other people. And why do we want to share it with other people? I hear you ask. Because you're going to be so impressed with this one. I know, I, I know, I know. Uh, hold on, there we go. What does that say? Starve. There's some people, sorry for those at the back there, stand up if you can't see. Um, there are some people who are starving. They're really hungry. They don't have enough. And this is why we think about harvest and we give thanks at harvest because we recognize that we have got lots, but we realize that we need to share it because there's loads of people who don't. And we know that even in this country, we've got special places that folk can get food because not everybody has enough. And we want to make sure that we who, now where are we? Did so, did you, ah, oh, you are ahead of the game. I can hear whispers from the front. Those who have enough want to make sure that we, it's like countdown going wrong, isn't it? Uh, I'm certainly not, what's her name? Carol Vorderman, yeah, exactly. Um, we want to make sure that we who have enough make sure we share with those who don't. So, on this, last time I'm going to do this, I promise, on this harvest. Oh, I've lost a bit of blue tack in every hand. I'll find it in the cauliflower later. On this Harvest Sunday, we want to make sure that we who have make sure we share with those who don't. And we really look forward to doing that. And actually, I'm going to ask that we bring down, we've got our crock pots, which have been at the door, where um, the session decided that not only, because sometimes we forget to bring things in harvest, and so we might want to just give a donation. And so this is going to go to the Toasty Tuesday. And we've also agreed that the pantry that we've set up on the Friday, which is just growing and growing each week, more and more people are coming to access the pantry. It's brilliant to be part of. And so we're going to make sure that the produce that we've collected goes to the pantry. 
So let's pray, a quick prayer of dedication on all the gifts that we've brought. Father, for the beautiful, yummy, delicious food, for the really practical financing, financial gifts, we give you thanks. We pray that we would always be people who share, that we remember those who don't have, and we give you thanks and glory for the harvest. Use these, our offerings, to build your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Brilliant, thank you so much. So, um, we are going to sing our song together about our God being a great big God. One of our themes for this morning's service is all about the bigness and the greatness of God. We're going to stand and sing together, but you're going to have to sing mega loud because we don't have music for this one, which is taking me to the flashback to yesterday's wedding that I took when I invited them to play the hymn for us to join and sing with. And there's just complete silence to which I was in. Ah, we're going a cappella, are we? So I had to belt it out, but I started really low, which was very awkward because I've got a bit of a cold. And so we kind of did this drone of all things bright and beautiful, which had like 1,200 verses. They just kept having more and more verses. And I was getting lower and lower. So I'm just setting expectations for how we're going to do it. Our God is a great big God, is lot, full of lots of life. Um, and um, we'll just see how we go. Oh, am I on? Did I switch myself on? I'm going to have trouble this morning. I'm going to have trouble this morning because I need to keep putting my, the mute on and off because the, the iPad isn't working upstairs. So if, you, if I forget to turn myself off during the songs, please wave at me. And if I forget to turn myself on afterwards, then please wave at me. Okay, everyone on our feet, let's go. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God, and He holds us in His hands. He's higher than a skyscraper, and He's deeper than a submarine. He's wider. There we go. This is what, this is, you're all going to love the tech team so much more after today. Ah, DJ Club has been brilliant having you with us. Um, we invite you now to go across the road for your time in the Pitcairn Centre and we'll be over straight after this for a cup of tea to join you. Thank you. We have been working our way through the book of Ephesians. Can you believe it? We've reached chapter six. These weeks have flown by. And I'd like to invite Nicola to come and take our reading this morning. Let's 
So today's reading is from chapter 6, 10 through to 20, and it's the armour of God. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power, put on the full armour of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled round your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that, Nicola. Let's once more join our voices together, accompanied this time by the organ, as we sing, All Heaven Declares. So we made it. We made our way through the book of Ephesians. Gosh, it was hard going at times, and yet there was such good truth that we found in each of those chapters. We had fun looking at some of these really beautiful phrases, so gorgeous and poetic. And we did a few body swerves of some things that we'll let the Bible study look at while they are meeting fortnightly in the church. This whole letter has been addressed to a church that Paul deeply cared for. It was a church he was passionate about because it was a church that he'd formed on his missionary trips. 
We've heard him encourage the church about their identity. Remember that phrase at the beginning, in Christ, in Christ, again and again. Remember who you are. You're in Christ. And then the other recurring theme that he really kept hammering home, you're united. There's no division. There's no opposition. You are one in Christ. You're united in that identity in Christ, not Greek and Jew. You're in Jesus. In this letter, Paul takes time to affirm the believers, reminding them of that unity, calling them to walk as children of the light. Laying out in the letter what walking as children of the light looks like, how we treat each other, how we speak to each other, what our behavior is supposed to reflect. And here we come to the closing words of this letter. At the very start of the chapter, we did another body swerve of the submission where Paul continues to write about submitting to one another. Children, submit to your parents. Slaves, submit to your masters. Masters, look after those in your care. And then we come to that great phrase. And finally, this is him drawing it all together. And finally, it put me in mind of when he used to get the news and they would rattle through all the depressing stories and headlines and then they'd say, and finally. And you're like, ah, oh, put a light relief. This is going to be some silly story about a cat or something, but it's going to be better than everything we've had. You paid attention for the and finally. And here we have Paul getting their attention. And finally, wait till you hear what I'm going to tell you at the end of this. And then Paul goes on to write that beautiful imagery that Nicola read out for us. Now, those of you that know me know that I am a visual person, so you'll not be surprised that this is one of my favorite bits of Ephesians because I can really picture it in my mind. And I connect with it because it's so practical. The first line is a belter. It tells us, be strong in the Lord. As he goes on about the armor, it's not about be strong in your ability to fight, be strong in your strength, in your own strength. We have to be strong in the Lord. What a brilliant reminder for us right at the start. It's God that is our strength. That really, really resonated with me. As you go into battle, you can think it's all up to you, right? Oh, I'm the one that is relying on. Please let me remind you this morning, if you are facing battles, I'm sure many of us are, but we get to be strong in the Lord. I also like the attention to detail of the wording where he says, and we are told to put on the full armor of God. This isn't about half measures. This isn't running out the door, putting your shoes on and trying to grab your coat. This is about being equipped, about using every single piece. Put on the full armor of God. Paul is most likely writing this from prison. He loves this church and he wants to make every word count. Put on the full armor of God. And why is that? He tells us it's in order to take stand against the devil's schemes. And we're reminded that we are in a battle. Now, I've maybe mentioned this before, um, but I actually really love a battle scene in a film. I'm completely opposed to all violence, but there's something about a battle scene that totally gets me, like, fired up. Braveheart is an obvious example. I love Lord of the Rings, tons of brilliant battle scenes in there. I absolutely, I get that kind of tingly goosebump feeling when you see them going to battle. Many of us here will be more than aware that life is like a battle. And I wonder if the reason that I love a battle scene so much is it gives visibility to something that I see going on in the world around me. 
our time together here is so short. We just want to look at key points. And so we don't want to focus too much on the battle this morning, but be focusing more on the armour. However, can I just give a really gentle reminder for those who maybe forget that we're in a battle, that Paul is reminding us that that's exactly what we are in. We spoke last week about context being everything. And the context of the church Paul was writing is was they were more than aware of the battle of life. They were under persecution. As this letter was being read out, I bet the church was going, nodding their heads, too right, it's a battle. Good grief, Paul. Absolutely. Paul's writing this from prison. He knows the battle that they're in. Sometimes we can forget that. Sometimes we can be complacent. Maybe when life's going pretty rosy, we forget of the spiritual dynamics that the church is called to. As you know, we have started Alpha. We started last week and we saw 14 people coming along and we had a brilliant night together. But for Sally and I, as we were planning it, there was a real sense of battle. Everything felt like it was really hard work. I had a full-on fight with our website. Things were getting delivered late. We were just, and you know, it just felt like we were coming up against wall after wall. And as Sally and I were talking, we were like, you know, this feels like a battle. Because Alpha is an amazing tool that really transforms people's lives. Of course, there's going to be a battle in seeing that going ahead. Life really can be like a battle. I have to say, I find this time of year really, really hard. When you go into the supermarket to get your messages, and you find yourself in an aisle with like blood-stained masks and like grim reapers to put at your door. Oh, there's something in me that just is so grieved by that. We live in spiritual times. And if any time of years shows us the forces of the battle between good and bad, this is a season where I see it acutely all around us. But we are to be strong in the Lord. We can face the battle with some of the best equipment. First thing on the list is the belt of truth. Ah, oh, I love truth. Just saying it makes me feel good. The belt of truth. In our warrior's armor, the belt was the thing that held everything together. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. It's truth that we rely on to hold everything together. Then we get the breastplate of righteousness. This is what protects the soldier's major organs. And let's remember that the righteousness is not in the person, but in what God did. It's Jesus' righteousness that is our breastplate. Not our good works, not our fancy acts that we do, not our reading our Bible every day and praying for hours and hours and hours. It's Jesus' righteousness that we have as our breastplate. Then we have our feet decked out with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. This battle is not about war. This battle is about peace. And it's the gospel of peace, the good news of peace. Often when I think of that, I love to think of leaving footprints. So you're leaving prints of peace wherever you go. The gospel of peace, that's the shoes that we're lacing up. Then with all the gear that we're being invited to take up, there's the shield of faith. I really liked what one of the commentaries said about the shield of faith. It said the word thyros is related to thyra, which is door. So the Romans used a similar word for the word they use for shield is similar to the word they use for door. And the Roman shields were a large door-like shield. I often think of it as one of these wee ones that you have on your hand. But this was a full-on body shield that would protect almost all of them. 
But what I really like about it is when they went to battle, they would all curry in together, standing shoulder to shoulder, and their shields would form a complete line. So their shield became more effective when they were using it with other people. Isn't that brilliant? I love that. We can have our shield of faith and we can carry it, but it is even more effective when we stand shoulder to shoulder with one another, all holding our shields of faith. This is a brilliant image for us. We are more effective when we're connected together. So then we have the helmet of salvation. (sighs) This is one I really do imagine putting on. Our minds can become crazy places with all kinds of destructive thoughts, with all kinds of damage and patterns of thinking. I don't know about you, but there are times I just wish I could switch my brain off just for a bit of calm. And then we hear of this beautiful helmet of salvation, remembering who we are, remembering what Jesus has done for us. If a soldier was to get a blow on the head, that would be really disastrous. They had to protect our head. And for us, as the church, in the battles that we're in, we have got to protect our heads. We have got to keep our thoughts tuned in to what it is that the Father is saying. Remembering we're his beloved. Remembering Jesus loves us and died for us and rose for us. We need to protect our minds with the helmet of salvation. And of course, we don't go into this battle ill-equipped. We carry the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. And we're reminded to pray. Pray on all occasions about everything. Prayer is so crucial. We gave out prayer cards for Alpha because we knew it was a battle and we knew we needed to pray. Prayer is so important. And prayer is accessible anytime, any place. We can access prayer. And by praying, we can just be talking to prayer as we tell the DJ club. It's not a big fancy thing. It's talking to God, talking to our dad asking for help, asking for him to look out for the people that we love. Prayer can be done at any age, in any place. And I was reminded of the two mighty warriors who changed an entire island through prayer. The famous Lewis Revival kicked off 1949 and went on into the 50s. It was kicked off by two warrior women, Peggy and Christine Smith. They were 84 and 82. Peggy was blind. Her sister almost bent double with arthritis. They couldn't even attend church. And yet, in this humble cottage where they lived, It became a sanctuary where they met with God. And God gave them a promise. He says, I'll pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon dry ground. So they got to pray. They prayed night and day. And the Lewis revival kicked off and is still a legacy which which carries on in Scotland today. Yes, we are in a battle. Sometimes we forget and then we're reminded. We are in a battle. But it's in a battle that we're equipped for. It's a battle that we don't face alone. We have one another together. We can know the strength of the Lord. We are strengthened by God, our powerful creator, and we are united in our vision. Let me finish this season of Ephesians with that beautiful prayer from chapter three. Let's pray. 
I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen us with power through his spirit in our inmost being. That Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith. That we may be rooted and established in love. That we may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, how long, how high and how deep is the love of Christ. And we pray that we would know this love that surpasses knowledge, that we may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. And to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we can ever ask or imagine, according to his power at work in us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Let's join our voices as we sing of the greatness and the might of God in our next hymn, Our God Reigns.
As ever, we always remember the needs of others in our time together. Let us take time now to pray for others. Let's pray. Gracious God, we have much to thank you for. Your creation so rich and the resources you have given us so many. And yet we all too rarely show our gratitude. We take your blessings for granted, complaining about what we've not got instead of rejoicing in what we have. For the poverty of our response to your great goodness, Lord, forgive us. We're not only ungrateful, but we can too be irresponsible, squandering what you have given frittering away the earth's treasures with no thought for tomorrow. We are part of a world which wantonly pollutes, knowingly wastes, and we have done little about it. For the poverty of our response to your great goodness, Lord, forgive us. We are at times not only irresponsible, but also selfish. Our thoughts, more often than not, concerned with our own satisfaction, with the pleasure of the moment. We forget the needs of those around us. We ignore the cry of the poor across the world. We forget the needs of future generations. We are part of a world in which the few have plenty and the rest get the crumbs from the table. A world in which the well-being of the future is sacrificed at the whims of the present. Help us not remain silent. Remind us how we can make a difference. For the poverty of our response to your great goodness Lord, forgive us. Gracious God, today on this Harvest Sunday, we are reminded thanksgiving is more than just words. It involves the stewardship of your gifts, the generosity of our giving, commitment to you and to others. Help us as we celebrate Harvest to recognize that challenge and to act upon it. For the poverty of our response to your great goodness, Lord, forgive us. Father, thank you that in our feelings, you do forgive. That in our inadequacies, you do bring transformation. As we have prayed for your forgiveness, we pray that we would rise up into the church you've called us to be, active and alive, shining your love and bringing your kingdom. Father, we have spoken today of the battle. Many of us here and online will be at the real edge of that battle, feeling the, feeling the um, heat of it. We pray that we would know you as our strength. And for others, we may be looking at other family members, dear friends, going through the battle and feeling powerless Father, thank you for Pong's encouragement to pray, knowing the difference that prayer makes. And so in the quiet, each of us bring the battles that we see around us into your throne room in the quiet of our hearts. Father, we thank you for the declarations that we made as a people that you reign. Lord, we pray that you would reign in our hearts, reign in this place, 
reign in Bonnyrigg. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Amen. Our final song, which we join in together, is a song of celebration on this Harvest Sunday as we have much to rejoice and celebrate in. Let us join together in song. Thank you. 